When you hear the term polar vortex, you might imagine a monstrous swirling storm of ice and snow, but in reality the polar vortex is something far more fascinating, a vast, invisible band of powerful winds that circles high above the Arctic, in the stratosphere, about 10 to 30 miles above the surface of the Earth. These winds form a kind of atmospheric barrier, separating the frigid polar air from the milder air, to the south. The polar vortex is a crucial part of our planet's weather engine, quietly shaping winter conditions across the northern hemisphere. Its main job during the long, dark winter months is to lock the coldest air over the Arctic, acting as a gatekeeper that keeps the deep freeze contained. This swirling wind barrier helps maintain the balance between the polar regions and the rest of the world, preventing the harshest cold from spilling southward, at least most of the time. When the vortex is strong and stable, it acts like a sturdy fence, keeping the jet stream flowing smoothly from west to east. The frigid Arctic air stays locked in place, and much of the United States and Europe experience milder, more predictable winters. The jet stream's steady path means fewer wild swings in temperature and less risk of extreme winter storms. But if the vortex weakens or becomes unstable, everything changes. The jet stream can buckle and twist, creating pathways for Arctic air to escape and surge southward. This is when we see sudden severe cold snaps and powerful snowstorms hitting places that aren't used to such extreme weather. A weakened vortex can turn a mild winter into a season of chaos almost overnight. That's why meteorologists and climate scientists watch the polar vortex so closely. Its stability is like the heartbeat of winter weather, offering clues about what's coming next. By tracking changes in the vortex, experts can better predict when and where the next big cold snap or snowstorm might strike. A strong steady vortex means balance in the atmosphere, with cold air contained and winter weather staying relatively calm and manageable but a weak, erratic vortex signals chaos ahead, unpredictable storms, plunging temperatures, and winter weather that can catch millions off guard. That's why a disturbance high above the North Pole can trigger record low temperatures and snowstorms far to the south, affecting cities and communities thousands of miles away from the Arctic itself. The polar vortex isn't a storm you can see or touch, it's a powerful circulation of air that when disrupted, can unleash Arctic cold on millions, reminding us just how connected our planet's weather systems truly are. Most major polar vortex disruptions happen in deep winter, January or February, when the Arctic is at its coldest and the stratosphere is primed for dramatic shifts. These disruptions are almost like clockwork, coinciding with the heart of winter, when sudden stratospheric warmings are expected and meteorologists are on the lookout for signs of instability. During these months, the polar vortex typically reaches its maximum strength, acting as a swirling barrier that keeps frigid air locked over the pole. Sudden stratospheric warmings, or SSWs, are dramatic but not entirely unexpected at this time of year. But this year, in late October 2025, we're witnessing something truly rare. An early season disruption that's catching scientists by surprise. Instead of waiting for the depths of winter, the vortex is already showing signs of instability while autumn leaves are still on the ground. Instead of strengthening and consolidating as it usually does before winter, the vortex is being knocked off balance before the season even begins. This early stumble is highly unusual and has far-reaching implications. Forecasts show stratospheric winds at near-record lows for this time of year. And the vortex is being stretched and distorted towards Siberia by a powerful high-pressure block over Greenland and Canada. This blocking pattern is acting like a wedge, pushing the vortex out of its usual position and making it far more vulnerable to further disruptions. It's a bit like a heavyweight boxer staggering in the very first round, unexpected, and a sign that the rest of the match could be full of surprises. The vortex is unusually weak, setting the stage for a volatile and unpredictable winter ahead. Normally, the polar vortex would continue to strengthen through November and peak in December, providing a stable pattern for the season. But this year, it's already faltering, and the usual rules may not apply. Such an early disruption is a true outlier. You'd have to look back decades to find a similar event. Historical records show that early season vortex breakdowns are extremely rare. And when they do happen, they often lead to unusual and sometimes severe winter weather across the Northern Hemisphere. 
last winter ended with a major disruption, and now the vortex is stumbling again, suggesting a lingering atmospheric weakness that could persist into the coming months. This back-to-back -back instability is raising new questions for scientists and forecasters alike. This isn't just another weather headline, it's a fundamental shift in the atmosphere that could shape the entire season, influencing everything from cold snaps to storm tracks and snowfall patterns. Meteorologists are on high alert for what's to come, closely monitoring every twist and turn of the polar vortex as we head into an uncertain and potentially historic winter. The weakening of the polar vortex isn't the result of a single event or anomaly. Instead, it's the outcome of a complex interplay of several powerful forces in our atmosphere, all coming together at once. You could call it a perfect storm of meteorological factors, each amplifying the effects of the others and setting the stage for dramatic changes in our weather. At the heart of this disruption is a stubborn high-pressure system parked over Greenland. This system acts like a massive wall of air pushing relentlessly against the polar vortex and causing it to warp and stretch out of shape. This so-called mountain of air disrupts the vortex through a process known as wave breaking. When these atmospheric waves break, they inject bursts of energy and warmth into the stratosphere, further destabilizing the vortex's normally tight circulation. But that's not all. La Nina, a recurring climate pattern in the Pacific Ocean, is also influencing the situation. La Nina tends to favor the development of high-pressure blocks in the Arctic, which in turn help atmospheric waves crash into the vortex with even more force. On top of that, the quasi-biennial oscillation or QBO is currently in its easterly phase. This phase makes the polar vortex even more susceptible to disruption, as it alters wind patterns high above the equator and weakens the vortex's defenses. When La Nina and a negative QBO line up at the same time, the odds of a weakened vortex don't just increase, they skyrocket, making dramatic atmospheric shifts much more likely. It's a true chain reaction. Global climate patterns amplify the Greenland block, which then destabilizes the vortex, setting off a cascade of changes that ripple across the northern hemisphere. This rare combination of factors is why the disruption is happening so early in the season, and with such unusual intensity. It's not something meteorologists see every year, the atmosphere is now primed for instability, meaning that the coming winter could bring wild swings in temperature, unexpected storms, and extreme weather events. With all these powerful forces converging, we're looking at the potential for a truly dramatic and unpredictable season ahead. So, how does a stratospheric event 30 miles up change our weather? The answer, the jet stream. A strong vortex keeps the jet stream straight bottling up Arctic air, but a weak vortex lets the jet stream meander, forming deep troughs and high ridges. These troughs open the door for frigid Arctic air to plunge south, while ridges bring warmth north. The result? Weather extremes, cold snaps, snowstorms, and persistent patterns. The effects aren't instant. It takes two to six weeks for stratospheric changes to reach the surface. So, a late October disruption means we'll feel the full impact by mid to late November and December. This gives us a window to prepare for what's coming. Expect stuck weather patterns, cold and snow in the east, mild and dry in the west. The disrupted jet stream turns up the volume on winter's extremes. With a wavy jet stream, the US faces a split winter. In the Northeast and Midwest, expect an early winter blast, temperatures 5 to 10 degrees below normal by mid-November. Widespread frosts, freezes and early snow are likely, especially around the Great Lakes, where lake effect snow could hit hard. The Northern Plains and Upper Midwest may see their first measurable snow much earlier than usual. The South and Southeast will start mild, but colder air will push in by late November, bringing a risk of damaging frosts. Meanwhile, the west coast will be under a persistent ridge, milder and drier than average, with storms deflected north. This could worsen drought conditions, even as the east braces for winter's early arrival. The main storm track will bypass the west, focusing action on the central and eastern U.S. Each region faces its own set of challenges as the pattern unfolds. Prepare for a winter that's anything but typical. Here's a quick breakdown of what to expect and when, northeast and mid-Atlantic, 
5 to 10 degrees colder than normal, early frosts, and possible coastal storms, mid-November into December, Midwest and Great Lakes, major cold outbreaks and lake effect snow, ramping up in early to mid-November. South and southeast milder start, but a sharp cooldown and risk of agricultural freezes by late November. West Coast. Milder, drier, and largely shielded from Arctic air, this pattern should last through early winter. This isn't just a U.S. story, the whole Northern Hemisphere is in play. Southeastern Canada, especially Ontario and Quebec, will see an early abrupt start to winter, with significant cold and snow. Central and Western Canada may stay milder and drier under the same high-pressure ridge affecting the U.S. West. This east-west split is classic for a disrupted vortex. In Europe, a weakened vortex often triggers a negative North Atlantic oscillation, blocking mild Atlantic air and opening the door for cold from Siberia or the Arctic. Northern and Western Europe, think UK, Scandinavia, Germany, face a higher risk of cold snaps and snow as winter begins. Long-range models already show a colder-than-average start for much of Europe. The effects will take weeks to fully develop but the stage is set for a challenging winter. The ripple effects of this disruption will be felt worldwide. Meteorologists look to the past for clues, and this year's early disruption echoes the autumn of 1981. That year, a rare October vortex disruption set up a brutal winter, with record cold and snow in January 1982. The sequence, early disruption, then a major sudden stratospheric warming, unleashed Arctic air for months. While no two years are identical, the physics are similar. An early weak vortex loads the dice for a harsh winter in the East and Midwest. The 1981-82 winter is a reminder of how a compromised vortex can trigger extreme high-impact weather. This history underscores why we need to stay vigilant and prepared. An early polar vortex disruption is a strong signal, but not a guarantee. Weather is always a game of probabilities. The vortex could recover, muting impacts, or it could stay weak and unleash severe cold. That's why it's vital to follow updates from trusted sources, like NOAA and ECMWF, who track these changes in real time. The two to six week lag gives us time to prepare, but only short and medium range forecasts will pinpoint where and when the worst will hit. The big picture. Higher odds of cold and snow in the east but local details will evolve. Prepare now, stay informed, and keep your winter gear handy. The winter of 2025-26 is already shaping up to be one for the books, and we'll be here to track every twist and turn.